2014 began with the House of Lords overwhelmingly supporting a free speech amendment proposed by Lord Deere. The Christian Institute backed the move under the Reform Clause 1 banner. January also saw the Charity Commission announce a U-turn over a Brethren Church's charitable status. The Commission had previously turned down the group over its communion policy, in a case that could have set a dangerous precedent on legal interference in church practice. At the end of the month, the Labour Party's bid to make sex education compulsory for all state-funded primary schools in England was rejected in the House of Lords by 209 votes to 142. In February, the Scottish Parliament voted to redefine marriage in law, rejecting amendments to provide greater civil liberty protections for people who believe in traditional marriage. Later in the month, the Christian Institute announced plans for a judicial review against the Name Persons Scheme in Scotland, warning that the proposal contravenes human rights laws by interfering with family life. At the beginning of March, the Christian Institute revealed that the Conservatives had been responsible for the biggest liberalisation of abortion practice since 1967. Former Tory Health Secretary Andrew Lansley had told clinics via secret guidance that women seeking an abortion do not need to see a doctor. And a Christian street preacher who was wrongfully arrested by police and held in custody received £13,000 compensation. The Christian Institute's Legal Defence Fund had supported John Craven. And Director Colin Hart said, In terms of the infringement of religious liberty, it was one of the worst cases we have ever dealt with. April saw the Northern Ireland Assembly rejecting same-sex marriage for the third time, with MLAs voting 51 to 43 against redefining marriage. In June, the No to Name Persons campaign was launched, bringing together many concerned groups who say the Scottish Government plans are misguided. Baroness Hale, the Deputy President of the UK Supreme Court, questioned whether the law could better accommodate religious conscience. In 2013, Lady Hale had rejected the appeal by Christian B&B owners Peter and Hazel Mary Bull over their double bed policy. The Department for Education launched a consultation on new school standards, which the Christian Institute warned could threaten schools with a Christian ethos. And in a landmark case, the Supreme Court dismissed an appeal to allow doctors to assist in suicides in a decision welcomed by pro-life groups. In July, an equality watchdog in Northern Ireland told a Christian-run bakery that they broke discrimination laws by declining to make a pro-gay marriage campaign cake. The Christian Institute stepped in to support the MacArthur family, who own the business, after the Equality Commission threatened them with legal action. Lord Falconer's latest push to weaken the law on assisted suicide was debated in the House of Lords and received widespread criticism, including from two disabled peers. And the government announced its support for controversial techniques to create three- and four-parent babies. That was despite the majority of the public opposing the plans. August saw the Christian Institute speaking out against Liberal Democrat proposals to introduce compulsory sex education for children as young as seven. And in Scotland, a child wellbeing survey linked to the Name Person scheme was stopped after parents raised concerns about its intrusive nature. In September, the Christian Institute launched Choose Life, a video series in which people shared their personal stories of how they were deeply affected by abortion. In a busy October, the Institute warned that new extremist disruption orders could target anyone who criticises same-sex marriage or Sharia law. News began to emerge of faith schools being targeted under controversial new regulations introduced in September. Following an inspection by school's regulator Ofsted, a Jewish school was downgraded and its pupils left traumatised by the questions asked by inspectors. Meanwhile in Reading, a small Christian school was threatened with closure for failing to uphold British values and told it should invite other faith leaders to take assemblies. In Northern Ireland, a consultation on weakening the law on abortion was launched by Justice Minister David Ford. And the Liberal Democrats seized on a report as evidence supporting the decriminalisation of drugs. But in a poll commissioned by the Christian Institute, only just over a quarter of people agreed the government should consider legalising cannabis. In November, the Equality Commission for Northern Ireland started formal legal proceedings against Christian-run Asher's Baking Company. One MLA described the action as essentially bullying. In light of the Asher's case, the DUP announced its intention to introduce a conscience clause in the province. In Scotland, the judicial review of the Scottish Government's Name Person Scheme, brought by the Christian Institute and others, was heard in court. A ruling is not expected for some months. And a group of MPs challenged the Department for Education to rethink its imposition of British values in schools. And finally, in December we reported on the results of a major survey which found that over 60% of doctors are still against assisted suicide. This led to the Royal College of Physicians reaffirming its opposition to a change in the law. 
The Christian Institute broadly welcomed important safeguards which are included in government guidance on how schools should deal with the definition of British values, demanded by new education regulations. The guidance makes clear that it is not necessary for schools or individuals to promote teachings, beliefs or opinions that conflict with their own, including alternative lifestyles or same-sex marriage. As we look forward to the coming year, we'd like to say thank you to all those who supported us in 2014. Our usual weekly news bulletin will resume next week. So until then, goodbye.